Humans have always been dissatisfied with their lot. Life is all too brief. And our short span on Earth, burdensome. For a thousand years, these harsh realities spurred the alchemist to search for an elixir to prolong youth. One of the elixirs of this century is a class of chemicals called organochlorides. Beginning with World War II, the insecticide DDT was mass produced, and it's estimated that a billion people were spared the ravages of malaria. Then followed the development of polychlorinated biphenols, or PCBs. Chemically inert and possessing high boiling points, these compounds were used as transformer coolants and flame retardants. In 1961, Rachel Carson, in her book Silent Spring, blew the whistle on the indiscriminate use of pesticides. Poisons that killed little things were also killing big things. The very property built into the pesticides, namely long life, was permitting them to accumulate in the food chain. Non-target species, such as fish and birds, were found to contain DDT concentrations 10,000 times the environmental background. Along with DDT, the non-biodegradable PCBs also began to show up in the environment. In this program, we'll examine the incidental production of dioxin and see what happens when scientists play dice with the elements. Chlorine and phenols had long been known for their disinfecting power. So it seemed reasonable to chemists in the 30s that if chlorine could be attached to phenols, the compound would be a potent microbial slayer. Their success resulted in a new class of pesticides called chlorophenols. One commonly produced member of this class is 2,4,5-trichlorophenol, or TCP. It consists of a benzene ring substituted with a hydroxyl group in the number one position and chlorines at positions two, four, and five. This compound is made in an autoclave containing methanol by reacting 1,2,4,5 tetrachlorobenzene with sodium hydroxide. Upon heating, the sodium hydroxide dissociates and the hydroxyl group displaces a chlorine atom. Now, if the temperature is not carefully maintained at 160 degrees, a deadly problem arises. The batch of TCP can become contaminated with 2378 tetrachlorodibenzodioxin, or TCDD, the most dangerous of the dioxins. TCDD is formed when a single 245 TCP molecule links with another. The oxygen of the hydroxyl on one TCP molecule displaces a chlorine on the second TCP molecule by attacking this carbon. At the same time, a similar reaction occurs here. Closing up the structure to form 2378 TCDD. This is the backbone for the family of 75 dioxins, all of which are very stable compounds. Of all the dioxins, 2378 TCDD is the most toxic, and when tested on laboratory animals, was found to be 10,000 times more lethal than cyanide. Dioxin targets the cells of the liver that organ which detoxifies the body. 
Under normal conditions, certain liver enzymes convert undesirable fat-soluble molecules into water-soluble molecules, which are then diffused out of the cell. Biochemists suspect that when dioxin enters the liver cell, it binds to a receptor protein. The dioxin protein complex then moves into the nucleus of the cell, where it steps up the production of these RNA helixes, which in turn trigger the production of enzymes in the cytoplasm. The production of liver enzymes may increase tenfold after ingesting dioxin. The result is the inadvertent removal of beneficial fat-soluble molecules. This induced hyperactivity wreaks havoc with the entire organism. It can best be described as biological meltdown. What then is an acceptable dioxin exposure level for humans? In the absence of epidemiological studies, less is better. So the safest recourse is to track down sources and pathways of dioxin. As we illustrated, dioxin is a waste product in the manufacture of chlorophenols. But dioxins are also byproducts when chlorophenols are used in manufacture. When chlorophenols and products treated with chlorophenols are burned, dioxins are released into the environment. The prime point source of dioxins appears to be flue gases and ash from municipal incinerators. In concentrations as high as 30 parts per million, dioxins are wafted into the environment in flue gases. And considering that lethal doses are measured in parts per trillion, it's an ill wind. Incinerators with electrostatic precipitators remove 95% of the ash, which has absorbed dioxins. Unfortunately, this lethal waste is frequently used for landfill, where dioxins contaminate groundwater, streams, and lakes. Ah, uh, but there is a ray of hope. Dioxins are not detected when incinerated above 2,000 degrees. At this temperature, they break down into harmless compounds. So even though the disposal of chlorophenol wastes and treated products is possible, it's very expensive. And people don't want incinerators in their backyard. One thing is clear. If we want to enjoy the benefits of chemistry, then we must stop gambling with the roll of the dice. We'd be prepared to pay for real solutions.